Şimdi e, bu seneki tema hakikaten e, dün de vurgulandığı gibi açılış, açılış panelinde İslam iktisadının en sıcak tartışma konularından bir tanesi ve e, bu alanın isimlendirilmesi e, özellikle fa, e, finans bağlamında e, işte biraz da Türkiye'ye özgü e, şartlardan dolayı işte İslami finans yerine biz alternatif isimlendirmeler kullanıyoruz. Bunlardan biri işte sektör için katılım bankacılığı. Fakat bizim İstanbul Üniversitesi'ndeki dersleri müfredata, lisans ve yüksek lisansla baktığımız zaman faizsiz finans, faizsiz finansal sistem, faizsiz finans gibi isimlendirmeler tercih ediliyor. Hakikaten bu da konunun ne kadar merkezde yer aldığını gösteren bir başka konu. Ama ee, burada faizi tek başına e, bunu doğuran sebeplerden bağımsız faize götüren olgulardan bağımsız bir şekilde ele alıp e, tartışmak yerine faize yol açan bizi faizi e, kaçınılmaz hale bize bu, bu sonucu e, sağlayan e, sistemi sorgulayıp bizi faize götüren olguları öncelikle belki de e, paralelinde beraberinde düşünüp e, tefekkür edip müzakere edip çözüm yollarını üretmemiz alternatifler geliştirmemiz icap ediyor ki faizi vazgeçilmez kaçınılmaz kılan her şeyin önünü öncelikle belki kapatıp zaten faizi bir ihtiyaç olmaktan bir sorun bir olgu olmaktan çıkarmaya doğru evrilmesi öncelikle tabi arzu edilen e, çalışma tarzı olması lazım e, faizin e, bizim için bir sorun olduğu sonucuna, bilgisine, inancına en başta tabii vahiy bilgisiyle ulaşıyoruz. Doğrudan doğruya e, nassa dayalı bir delilimiz var e, ayet-i kerime ve onun izahı olan hadislerle. Fakat faizin e, neden bir sorun olduğunu sadece e, vahiy bilgisine değil aynı zamanda akli bilgiyle e, ele alıp enine boyuna bunun e, en başta sünnetullah'a neden aykırı olduğu neden bu evrende kurulmuş olan bu düzene e, nasıl aykırı bir olgu olduğunu tespit edip ondan sonra topluma, ekonomiye, kültüre, insanın doğasına e, ne tür olumsuz sonuçları olduğunu da akletmemiz gerekiyor ki bu da hikmet. İşte bugün ki ilk oturumumuzda bu o, konuya e, önemli katkılar yapacağını düşündüğümüz iki değerli e, sunumumuz olacak. E, Profesör e, El Cerhi ve e, Tosif e, Azit bize bu o, e, faizin e, ekonomik etkinsizlik ve ee, toplum üzerindeki olumsuz sonuçlarını yansıtan e, sunumlar yapacaklar e, ve inşallah e, bu yolda e, bu bu konuda e, bize yeni bir ufuk açmış olacaklar. Okay, e, Professor, uh, the floor is yours. You have twenty minutes. Uh, floor is yours. Tafaddal. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وقائد الغر المحجلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان اليوم الدين اللهم إنا نسألك فتحا قريبا طيبا سهلا مبينا فيه نفحة من علمك وحكمك وقبس من نورك وهداك وسعة من توفيقك وسدادك ورزق من العمل الصالح الخالص لك وحدك لا شريك لك ننفع به الإسلام والمسلمين وننتفع به معهم يا رحم الرحيم uh, It is Distinguished audience uh, Brothers and sisters Assalamu alaikum Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, I am Try to show you <coughs> Today Uh, two of the most important inefficiencies that are caused by the uh, rate of interest. And also I'd like to show you how Islamic economics or an Islamic economic system 
would take care of these two efficiencies and eliminate them completely. And uh, in this context, I will also review with you the main features of my model for an Islamic economic system that was published in 1980 and still uh, yani, uh, surviving the uh, passage of time. So uh, the main issue here is that Islamic versus conventional finance. The characteristics of Islamic finance are different. The conventional finance, it's based on the classical loan contract. There are some people who raised yesterday the issue that what is the rate of interest and what is it? It is actually comes from the loan contract that you trade present for future money at a premium. The premium is interest. Uh, if it, there is no premium, it would be qard hasan. But nobody would do that except for charitable purposes. So this is the economist definition of interest. Nothing else can, can, can work. Uh, the prohibition of riba, and of course the word premium here means riba. That's what, why, uh, and actually it's a very close meaning. So no trading of present for future money at a, at a premium. This is, this is what prohibition of riba means. Uh, it also means that the time preference, time preference would be in commodities, but not in money. Because uh, money has no intrinsic value, but naturally we would have time preference for commodities. The finance would be, in Islamic finance, would be given as money in return for equity or rights to share in future business profits or product. We share in profit or product. And future delivery of commodities, that's in the case of, of, uh, of Salem. And also, uh, we can finance through providing commodities delivered in return for commitment to repay their value at a future date. Of course, these commodities could mean physical or could mean services or use of use of fact of assets. Transactions types, and this is a very important distinction in economics, although uh, yani some, uh, it would be very helpful to dis use this distinction of transactions types in order to understand the difference between Islamic and conventional finance. We have the first type of transactions is real, and then semi-real, and nominal transactions. Now, real transactions would be commodities against money. Semi-real would be currency, one currency against another currency, but without any delay in payment, uh, or no deferred payment. And the third would be a monetary asset against uh, uh, cash, uh, or like as in trading debt, or uh, or as in uh, <clears throat> as in trading uh, risk. So uh, only real and semi-real transactions are allowed by Islam, and this actually gives us this classification of transactions give us a criterion that we can use to see what is haram and what is halal. But it also it gives the, it gives us some signal about the economic effects of each transaction. So nominal transactions are strictly prohibited. Uh, sandwiching two real, a real transaction with two nominal transactions still doesn't make much difference. It would be like, it would be a ruse or hila. It would be like Jews fishing on Saturday. And of course, Muslims are not supposed to, to do the same because the hila is actually worse than the regular violation. Why? Because in regular violation, you know you're violating something, and you know that you, you, you, you, you're, you're admitting that, you, that you're, you're in violation. But in Hila, you try to deceive God. So it is double sin here, deception of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as well as disobedience of Him. So uh, we do not, so sandwiching, 
real trans a real transaction with nom two, two nominal transactions or sandwiching a nominal transaction with two real transactions is uh, not allowed. Buying a commodity for deferred payment and selling it to its seller, like Aina, and or to a third party, like, as in Tawarruq, that would be a, two real transactions sandwiching a nominal transactions, covering it. So this is some kind of a camouflage. And uh, the ultimate consequence is the sale of present for future money. And if you would ask our distinguished Sharia scholars, they would say to you that the, an, an action is, should be judged by its ultimate consequence. It could be mubah, but if the ultimate consequence is not is haram, the action would be haram. So we economists agree to that, and uh, we accept that. So nominal transactions would be debt and risk trading, trading present money against an IOU, or a debt, and uh, that's debt trading, or trading present money against the an uncertain and uncertain payoff of a gamble. And that's a derivative. That's the exact definition of a derivative. And uh, both debt and risk trade are prohibited in Islamic finance. Uh, all three types of transactions are allowed in conventional. In conventional finance, everything goes. So uh, now we know how different we are, and, uh, no, so, and we would like to see uh, an economy which uses money. Uh, so uh, the uh, current system revolves around the rate of interest, the, the conventional system. A large amount of debt and, and risk are traded in national and international markets. And the interesting thing about it that this amount of trading exceeds many times what is, being, what is happening in the real sector. Until 1930, everybody accepted the capitalist system and nobody thought, about, thought there was something wrong with it. The American economy witnessed about 35 crises before the Great Depression. Why I'm giving you this example? Because in order to show you that how, uh, how tolerant Western economists to the uh, bad natures, to the disadvantages of, the, uh, of, the, uh, of, of, of market capitalism. This tolerance means that they passed through 35 crises until 1930, and they didn't say anything. When, it came to, when 1930 came, everybody was surprised. Why, why would you surprise? You had it before 35 times. So, uh, so now we, whenever we pass with, a, with any crisis in the uh, Western market economies, we always think of when is the next crisis going to be. The Great Depression was met by, uh, confronted by uh, uh, expansionary monetary, expansionary fiscal policy under the New Deal of Roosevelt. And uh, at that time, some major proposals of reforming the capitalist system came about. The Chicago Plan, presented by Simons and Fisher in 1936, and uh, that would actually revolve around narrow banking and switching to total reserves. Uh, Keynesians focused because Keynesians were part of the system. They were the ones who really designed the New Deal. So they, they uh, focused on the failure of the banking system to increase credit. But usually banking systems do not increase credit at times of crisis. They do the opposite. So this is part of the Western uh, system. Economists consider the rate of interest as the relative price of present to future money. And since it is a price, it's very important. It plays an important role in the market economy. So you will never find a, a, an economist who would propose removing a price. So that's why people or as, uh, Western economists ignored the issue of interest. So, uh, and also our theory, our economic theory, uh, and uh, even monetary theory was developed 
in the absence of money. There was no reason in our model to hold money. So uh, in order to have this raison d'etre of money, then uh, some, you must introduce some friction. The most important friction, uh, of course I, I, I can, I'm giving you examples in my article, but the most important friction would be search model. So the search model is a model, is a monetary model that gives you justification for holding and using money as a, as a, not, as a means of exchange. Uh, so uh, now these search models, what do they do? In Leon Varras and his model, uh, the French, old French or ancient French economist, tried to explain demand and supply in equilibrium through centralized exchange. In other words, all, the, the, all demanders and suppliers would meet in one room and the auctioneer declares prices until he or she reaches equilibrium price for every and each commodity in the market. In this economy where we have, this, we have centralized exchange, there is no reason for money. After all, we, we have somebody to get, tell us what the equilibrium price is and we trade at this. Uh, the, uh, but uh, so uh, Kayotaki and Wright and also Kutcher, Kutcher Lakota, uh, they structured a, a, a friction model uh, that would, uh, uh, but, but they, found, they found that Asians cannot execute all socially desirable traits. And we will see why because that's very, very interesting. Buyers and sellers search, and they gain information, but one of them benefits if, it's, if he's, he or she searches more, it cannot, the benefit cannot be transferred to the other one. So, uh, so we can see here that uh, the, the, the in, because money requires search, or uh, using money requires a friction called searching, and because searching brings in some externality, and this externality cannot be internalized, then actually uh, uh, traders would find themselves uh, not able to internalize, so they will, not, they will not trade as much as they should at, and the, under the optimal level. So, uh, uh, so money, of course, facilitates exchange in asymmetric matches, but uh, uh, the, the, the, uh, the use of money uh, can improve social welfare when you have a single coincidence. But if you have double coincidence, money will not be required. If you and I have the same goods to trade, we don't need money. So uh, the monetary equilibrium would suffer from two inefficiencies here. And this is where the rate of interest comes in. First, uh, as I said yesterday, the Friedman Samuelson inefficiency. Uh, Samuelson article was in 58, and Friedman was in 69. And uh, this means, it simply says that, uh, that because there is an, a positive rate of interest, money becomes costly to use in transactions. People would be interested in keeping their money in the bank in order to earn interest, and not to use it in transactions. So uh, uh, the, the, the, this positive rate of interest means that people would substitute their resources for money and the total output would be suboptimal. And that's the essence of the Friedman's inefficiency. The second type of efficiency, of inefficiency, uh, in the presence of the rate of interest is called Hossius type. And this, this is related to trading. Asians searching, search to, to improve, yani, uh, Asians, when they search for trade, they can, they're searching improve their partners matching, uh, but, uh, but they cannot sell the information they obtain to others. So, they cannot internalize such externality, so they make fewer trades than efficient. 
So the second type of inefficiency is that we're not in the presence of the rate of interest. We are not trading optimally. We are trading suboptimally. So uh, uh, how ca- would Islamic economics and Islamic finance take care of these two efficiencies? Of course, these two efficiencies are of many. In the opening session yesterday, I gave you few other exam- more examples of these efficiencies. But these are the, some of the important ones. Uh, so uh, the Friedman's efficiency in an Islamic economic system, we have no classical loan contract. So we do not sell my, my, my present for future money. Uh, we have 20 contracts to be, that can be grouped under either equity, profit, and product sharing, agency investment, or sale and fin- sale finance. The all types of all money issued in the, by the central bank would be placed in central investment deposits with banks or CDC. So this is this is where my model comes in. Okay, you do not have you eliminate the rate of interest and you have the twenty contracts. What do you do? How do you do with issuing money? You don't lend it to the government. You the central bank opens investment accounts with every, every bank and allocates the newly issued money uh, to, to, these, to these central deposits in banks. So that this would be an investment-based economy and not a lending-based economy. So, uh, and then we also observe total reserves. Of course, I don't have time to explain to you why should we switch, why we should switch from uh, uh, fractional to total reserves. The central bank issues central deposit certificates. And uh, why? Because you see, if you want to carry out monetary policy, monetary policy is carried out through uh, government debt, government bonds. But uh, you need an equity-based, in, in an Islamic economic system, you need an equity-based financial instrument to use as a tool for monetary policy. So the central bank issued central deposit certificates. It puts the proceeds in central deposits. And these CDCs would be traded in the open market. And monetary policy would be conducted, first of all, either you add, the central bank adds or withdraws from central deposits. Or for fine-tuning, it it, it, it carries out open market operations in CDCs. So the rate of return on CDC or the RCDC becomes the opportunity cost of holding money. Imagine here that we have uh, a rate of return on an equity uh, investment that is done all over the economy with the highest degree of diversification. The rate of re- this rate of return approaches the average rate of return on investment. It approaches the average rate of profit on assets. It approaches the rate of growth of wealth. It means it approaches the real rate of growth. So actually, we, instead of seeking uh, a target of uh, low inflation rate, we, add, we, we, uh, uh, we equate the rate of monetary expansion to the rate of return on CDCs or RCDC because it means that we are we be equating the the rate of monetary growth with the rate of growth with the rate of real growth, which means that we will have no inflation or deflation whatsoever, and that actually shoots right in the heart the idea of monetary policy pursuing little inflation or the saying that's actually economically wrong that a little bit of inflation is good for you. Just it, it's just like like a little bit of liquor, as some Catholics would say, is good for your stomach. This is, has proven to be incorrect. And we know in Islam that ما أسكر كثيره فقليله حرام. What intoxicates a lot of it, cannot, is, is, a little of it would be prohibited. So we have absolute price stability. And the, uh, uh, the RCDC here is a rate paid on Mudaraba. It is uncertain. It cannot convince people. It cannot uh, give a people an incentive to reduce their transactions to a optimal level. So we, we, uh, 
we uh, uh, we get rid of the uh, uh, we we get rid of the uh, of, of Friedman's Friedman's inefficiency. As to Hose's on efficiency, the sale finance. See, you we banks are providing sale finance. So what banks do when they they carry transactions, they try to they do searching, and they, they, they, they try to preserve both the buyer and the, the seller, because the banks pays, buys commodities from suppliers and sell them to finance users. So the bank merges the interest to both sides. So, uh, uh, so in this case, uh, the matching possibilities of each partner would be internalized, and we would have the optimal amount of trading in this case because we have ignored the rate of interest and we used Islamic finance. So banks play a catalytic role in matching buyers and sellers, distributing externalities of improving match, match opportunities to both sides so that such externalities can be completely internalized. Uh, in equity finance, the participation, of course, people uh, under the uh, under Hose's inefficiency, people would be doing also less equity finance, less equity participation than optimal. So, but when you uh, when banks participate in capital restrict uh, subscription of companies and do musharaka, and this is also stresses the role of musharaka in Islamic finance, then. Uh, People will consider that those that the bank has has put an, uh, the required amount of diligence, due diligence. So this investment would be free from the lemon problem. So uh, that would encourage people to do more equity and reach the optimal level of equity tribe participation. So the same applies to Mudaraba and Wakala finance, which means the. Uh, yani that both types of inefficiencies disappear. So switching from an interest-based finance to Islamic finance would serve two purposes at the same time. First, money would, be, have, would have no positive rate of return, and consequently, traders have no incentive to economize on money in transactions, and the value of real balances would, would reach its optimum. Second, all search externalities would be internalized to trading partners through banks providing Islamic finance. And uh, thank you very much. Wallahu a'lam. Alhamdulillah. Thanks, Professor. Uh, it is really important uh, to uh, open these new uh, windows to uh, redefine the time value of money in the in finance. I mean, we really need to redefine uh, many concepts such as uh, time value of money because uh, the old finance is based on this concept. So uh, basically, I hope this uh, would be a good contribution to our search for a uh, uh, new uh, b benchmark in the economy. Uh, I hope uh, uh, this uh, study uh, will provide this. So uh, now I, uh, I uh, leave the floor to the discussant, Professor uh, Shakir Görmüş. Selamun Aleyküm. Biraz e, konunun zorluğundan dolayı bir de Türk arkadaş fazla Türkçe yapacağım inşallah müzakereyi. Şimdi özellikle e, Profesör El Jarhi'ye teşekkür etmek istiyorum Ali El Jarhi'ye. Çünkü biz faiz konusunu konuşurken hep şunu yapıyorduk. E, faizi işte ayetlerden, hadislerden alıyorduk. E, neden İslami açıdan yasaklandığını bütün dinler açısından yasaklı bunu belirtiyorduk. Sonra işte e, klasik iktisattan e, yola çıkarak neden faizin verimsiz olduğundan bahsediyorduk. Burada da yine aynı şekilde faizin neden e, ekonomi açısından verimsiz olduğu Okay. E, neden e, verimsiz olduğunu açıklıyorduk. Burada da aynı şekilde işte e, Samuelson'un e, verimsizliği ile ilgili, Hoisman'ın e, verimsizliği ile ilgili yine klasik modelden e, alıntılar var e, bu konuda. Ve bizim bu konuda faiz konusundaki en büyük eksiz, eksikliğimiz, evet biz faizin 
neden sakıncalı olduğunu biliyoruz. İslami açıdan e, neden yasaklandığını biliyoruz. Ekonomide yol açtığı tahribatları her şeyi biliyoruz. Ama bu faiz illetinden kurtulamıyoruz. Bundan kurtulmak için de gerekli olan en önemli şey bizim faizin yerine alternatif enstrümanları geliştirmemiz gerekiyor. İşte burada e, Profesör Ali Carhi'ye teşekkür etmek istiyorum. E, bu bir faizsiz enstrüman en azından e, şu anda en basit anlamıyla da olsa daha geliştirmek e, açısından çok yol kat edilmesi gerekse de bir enstrüman geliştirmesi yolunda bir adım atılmış durumda. E, ülkemizde biz e, tartışırken arkadaşlar da en son şu vardı bu promosyon olayı vardı biraz konu dışına çıkacağım ama müzakereye de geleceğim. Promosyon olayında biz şunu söylüyorduk bütün insanlar promosyonlarla bankalara alıştırdı ve faize bulaştırılacak diye e, bu tartışmaları hep yapıyoruz ama şunu hiç biz yapmıyoruz yani faizden kurtulmak için bizim faizi yasaklamamız bir çözüm değil. Bunun 1985'lerde Pakistan'da örneği var faiz yasaklanıyor yüzde sekiz olan faizler tezgah altı faiz olarak yüzde on iki on beşlere çıkıyor. Bizim yapmamız gereken yeni enstrümanlar bulmak. Burada da e, Profesör Ali Carhi bir enstrüman geliştirmiş. Biraz e, önce bundan bahsedeyim. Teknik bir konu. Sonra da birkaç tane eleştirimi getireyim. Şimdi burada e, aslında bizim e, para politikaları dersinde e, de diyelim, açık piyasa işlemleri dediğimiz işlemlerin Real ekonomiye uyarlanmış bir hali var eğer bunu bir benzetme yapacak olursak bizim para politikasında işte açık piyasa işlemlerinde finans sektörü var işin içinde faiz var hazine bonusu tahvilleri var buradaki modelde direkt olarak modelden giriyorum başlangıçta şunu kabul ediyoruz biz normal e, ne diyelim borç sertifikaları veya borç işlemleri yok bunun yanında biz e, çeşitli yatırım ve e, finansla ilgili e, kontratlar veya anlaşmalar yapıyoruz işte bunlar equity dediğimiz hisse senetleri kar zarar ortaklıkları yatırımlar veya işte e, ne diyelim bunu tüketim finansmanı açısından burada burada merkez bankası e, para basmak yerine veya piyasaya para sürmek yerine eğer yanlış anlamadıysam bankalara investment e, dediğim mevduatı denen bir mevduat koyuyor. Buna biz ne dedik burada İngilizce olarak central deposit dedik. Burada para yerine central deposit dediğimiz hesaplar açılıyor bankalarda ve bankalar bu hesaplardan işte bu daha önce söylediğimiz hisse senedi, kar zarar ortaklığı, yatırım ve e, tüketimin finansmanı konusunda ne yapıyor? Mudaraba şeklinde işlemler yapıyor. Burada para yok. Buradaki olayda e, şöyle bir şey var. Bu güzel bir şey eğer uygulanabilirse. İşin içinde para olmadığı için buradaki e, ne diyelim borç işlemleri, faize dayalı işlemler yok. Bunun yanında reel ekonomiye katkı sağlayacak e, mal alım satımıyla ilgili işlemler var. Şey olarak. Şimdi burada sent, Merkez Bankası yine e, ne diyoruz buna merkezi mevduat sertifikası denilen bir sertifika geliştiriyor. Yeni bir şey olarak bu aslında e, bu sertifikayla da alım satım yaparak para arzını ne yapabiliyor diyelim kontrol edebiliyoruz veya para politikası geliştirebiliyor buradan anladığımız kadarıyla e, işte para politikasını buradan uygulayabiliyor. Burada e, merkezi sertifika e, merkezi mevduat sertifikasının değeri nasıl belirlenecek? Ortada bir faiz yoksa eğer bunun bir e, kullanım bedelinin olması gerekiyor. Bunu da zaten biz burada bankadaki e, yatırım hesaplarından e, işte mudaraba yaptığımız için ekonomiye endeksli olacak. Ekonomideki e, söylediği veya buradan anladığımız kadarıyla yine şey yaparak ekonominin büyüme oranına reel büyüme oranına endeksli aslında bu e, merkezi e, mevduat sertifikasının bir getirisi olacak şey olarak burada modelin şeyi bu sonuçta bir sertifika var merkez bankasının bu mudarabaya dayalı işlemler yapılıyor bu işlemlerin sonucunda da bir getiri elde edilecek bu getiri de reel ekonominin büyümesine orantılı olacak şey olarak şimdi benim anladığım kadarıyla burada önerilen model bu bu modelin en büyük şeyi olarak da burada bir borç alışverişinden parasal bir borç alışverişinden daha çok reel ekonomiye dayalı mudaraba işlemlerinin olduğunu görüyoruz. Şimdi burada şey olarak işlemlere baktığımız zaman tabii bunun uygulamaya geçildiği zaman şunu şey yapabiliriz. Bir biz parayı tamamen sistemden çekeceğiz mi? Bunu, bunu bir belirlememiz gerekiyor. İki buradaki central deposit sertifika dediğimizin bunun getirisinin biz 
reel büyüme endeksli olduğunu söyledik ama bu nasıl belirlenecek? Yani reel büyümeye göre nasıl belirleyeceğiz? Bunlar alınıp satılırken ülkenin reel büyüme oranına göre mi belirlenecek? Bu nasıl olacak? Bunların açıklanması e, gerekiyor sistemin işleyişiyle ilgili. E, ben şöyle bir şey, şey yapabilirim yani önerebilirim. Keşke bunu bir model veya bir örnek üzerinden eğer açıklayabilseydik. Hani işte e, şu kadar biz parasal olarak işte e, ne diyelim e, investment e, account dediğimiz yatırım mevduatı açıyoruz. İşte 1 milyar TL'lik şu bu. Bunun karşısında Merkez Bankası işte şöyle işlemler yapıyor. Ekonominin getir, e, reel büyüme oranı şu şekildedir. Sertifikada şu kadar. Bunu sayısal olarak bir modelleyip örnekleyebilirseydik bizim için anlamamız daha kolay olabilirdi. Şu anda biz kafamızda açıkçası ben kafamda bir şey oluşturdum. Ama sistemin nasıl işleyeceğini sayısal olarak bir gösterebilseydik bizim için çok daha açıklayıcı olabilirdi. Bunun yanında evet bu, biz bu sistemi biliyoruz. E, bu e, iki tane bizim verimsizlik dediğimiz Samuelson'un ve Hoysa'nın e, verimsizliğini eğer işleyebilirse giderici etkisi var. Ama her zaman şunu söylüyorum ben. E, bunun uygulanabilirliğinin e, model olarak ortaya konulması gerekiyor. Model olarak. Çünkü biz bir model veya böyle bir şey yazdığımız zaman gerçek hayata döktüğümüz zaman bunun tıkandığı noktaları görmemiz gerekiyor. Daha önce de söyledim biz işte Pakistan'da 1985'te faizler yasaklandı. Yani bir kanunla yasaklandı. Kanunlar yasaklandıktan sonra bütün bankalar faiz uygulamıyor. Onun yerine işte marka price dediğimiz bizim faize yakın bir fiyat. Hatta tezgah altında faizden yüksek bir bir faiz ortaya çıkıyor bir şey olarak. Burada benim söyleyeceğim bu, bu modelin daha örnekle açıklanması gerekiyor. E, bu şekliyle bir model olma açısından, uygulamaya görüntü açısından bence çok büyük ve e, önemli bir çalışma. E, faizsiz finans konusunda önemli bir katkı sağlayabilir. En azından bir çözüm önerisi sunuyor. Bizim için de en önemli şey zaten çözüm önerisi. Ama bunun uygulanabilirliği konusunda daha fazla bu e, çalışmanın, bu makalenin ilerleme kaydetmesi e, gerektiğini düşünüyorum ben. E, söyleyeceklerim bu kadar. Teşekkür ediyorum. <gülüyor> Evet, teşekkür ederiz Şakir Hocamız. Bu anlamda belki hakikaten e, oldukça ileri iktisadi analizleri gerektiren bir e, sunumdu. Profesör Cihal'in bir Şakir Hocamız belki e, tam oturmamış, açıklamamış o konuda ta, e, vuzuha kavuşturmuş oldu. E, if you have any comments on this, the, this the floor is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillah ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulillah. Well, you see, the, uh, the model is, of course, is quite detailed. And, uh, you know, uh, of course, all the points that have been raised by our distinguished commentator here are quite valid, I accept him. But, uh, so, but they fall into one category, more explanation and more examples. And uh, of course, even we need practical examples for the horses inefficiency and Friedman's inefficiency. Uh, so uh, the, the, the, the, we cannot really present more details here, unfortunately. Uh, if you have any time after, after the session, I am, you know, I am available. Uh, Uh, my my lecture notes include all of this, include also a plan of converging, of of actually converting, and a conventional economic system into an Islamic economic system, a gradual, reasonable. The, this idea came through when, uh, in the during the Pakistani problem, I was working with the Islamic Development Bank, and uh, I had the honor of going there and pre giving a presentation uh, to the uh, Supreme Court, the Sharia Circle at that time, and uh, tried to explain to them that uh, the implementation of an Islamic economic system is not, cannot be done through the prohibition of interest alone. You have to have an institutional structure. And uh, the institutional structure is here, but it takes time to implement it. You have to make a plan for two or three years to move from one case to another. So it is not really uh, something that you, 
that you take lightly, Converged, converting one economic system to another, all of a sudden, either does not work or will lead to catastrophes until the economy adjusts itself. The example for that would be the Soviet Union switching from uh, socialism to capitalism uh, on, in one day. And that led to so many, so many problems and so much losses which were totally un unnecessary had, it been, had there been a plan uh, for gradual application. And remember, you see, gradualism is part of our Islamic approach. So many prohibition, prohibitions of things which were uh, so ingrained inside the Arab society, the pre-Islamic Arabic society, like liquor and like gambling, uh, and like also interest, took time, and, uh, and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made his instructions coming at stages. So there should be stages. But I, I will just answer one technical, small technical problem, which uh, of course takes a long time for me and when I, in teaching the, my class of Islamic economics. That's how the RCDC, the rate of return on central deposits, certificates in central deposit certificates, how can it approach or be a good estimate of the real rate of growth? This is very crucial because this is going to be the anchor of the economy. Now remember the anchor of the economic system in the conventional economic system is the rate of interest. It is not, it is not market demand determined. It is an, it, it's a, an administered price. The central bank sets the rate. And we always talk about whether the central bank wants to raise the rate or reduce the rate, and all of the interest rate expectations go along that. And people, people trading in financial markets, do not, especially in debt and, and, and risk markets, do not consider at all the, uh, the fundamentals. They consider the, what the, how about the other guy? What is the other guy doing? This is what Keynes talked about. And this is what we call the herd, herd effect. Everybody trying to predict what the, what the uh, herd or where the herd, which direction the herd is going so that you can go instead of being stepped on. Uh, so, but in, in, in, an, in an equity model like an equity uh, instrument like that, people will be de handling it and trading in it on the basis of fundamentals. Which bank, which investment sectors, what are the profitability, how the economy is moving, and so on. So, the, because, because trading is done on fundamentals, that's why the, uh, the rate that we get from trading would be what we expect the economy to achieve. And this achievement is nothing but growth. So, of course, we can make mistakes in the market, in the CD, in the CD, uh, C market, but these mistakes can be easily corrected, and it will be reflected on uh, the divergence between the rate of, uh, uh, the rate of monetary expansion and uh, the, the, the, rea the rate of return on central deposits, and the central bank uh, can adjust, can work out a method to adjust its, uh, its uh, monetary uh, expansion or contraction uh, to that rate. So there are ways of, for, uh, for mid, uh, midway, uh, or, or midway adjustments, like when you're sending a rocket, a rocket to the moon, and uh, it, uh, of course it will not go right away in the right direction. You have to keep adjusting it so that it would go to the moon and not where else. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thanks, Professor. Uh, so uh, now I'll open uh, the uh, Q&A uh, comments and questions session. But uh, being the moderator, so I'll take the advantage of making the first comment and the uh, question uh, briefly. Uh, of course, I mean, the, uh, all we do is try to uh, convert the time value of money or the rate of return uh, from an artificial concept to a natural concept. So the time value of money in Islamic uh, economics is uh, something natural. 
uh, not artificial or determined. Of, unfortunately, today uh, the theory or some uh, the, the uh, textbooks explain the uh, interest rate within the mar uh, market uh, mechanism. Uh, you know, uh, it's a, you know the uh, basic explanation of the you know uh, interest. Uh, they say you know uh, uh, it is the result of the market mechanism, but it is not. As Professor indicated, uh, it is determined by the uh, central banks. Plus, uh, it is used uh, the price of risk. Who determines the risk? For instance, uh, take the uh, rating agencies. Can we rely on them? Can, do you think they are really uh, uh, value? Uh, or I mean, uh, are they just in their valuation? No, nobody can say that. Yeah, unfortunately, inshallah, uh, these uh, these ideas will uh, take uh, place uh, in the in the practical world. Uh, but I'll uh, ask Professor to answer brief course uh, this uh, explanation. Uh, you mentioned the time preference in commodity. Uh, can you a little bit elaborate this concept? Because in in the money context, time preference in uh, money. For instance, I'll lend you one dollar today in exchange for two dollar tomorrow. If I lend you in, uh, in, if I lend you one apple today, can I uh, ask you to give me two apple tomorrow? Thank, you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, actually, uh, the uh, the time preference is inevitable because we do not live forever because of the fact that ma mankind is mortal, so consumption today, things today are more certain than things tomorrow. This is inevitable. So, how, to, how, to, how uh, but, but you know, it would be very strange to reduce time very preference of people into money, because money, we have fiat money. It has no intrinsic value. You cannot consume it. It has no. It gives you, as economists to, or neoclassical economists would say, no utility whatsoever. So, but uh, how about the time value in commodities? How is it reflected? It's reflected by what is the price of a car today? If you want to pay in cash, you would pay maybe uh, five uh, fifty thousand. Uh, uh, liras, okay, is that right? So 50,000 liras. But you want to pay in one year, so it will go, going to be 55,000 or 56,000, okay? So the time value in commodities means that there would be a, a premium for uh, payment today and there would be an extra price or an increase in the price for being able, for the deferring payment uh, for a year or two or so. So, and that's, that was allowed by the Sharia uh, uh, scholars, and this is reflected in Murabaha and Bay'a Bisam and Ajil and Salam, that, uh, uh, and that's, that's actually uh, when we have competition in the market, the competition between buyers and, and also the competition between sellers will produce rates of time preference for every commodity. That would, be, that would represent something that is more real and has more implications on the commodity sector or the real sector than what we have now. Thank you. Thank you. Evet, e, şimdi eğer dinleyicilerimizden soru veya yorum varsa if you have any comment or question briefly actually we are uh, out of time okay uh, there is one comment from professor shaker yeah. okay. uh, as i said before as an economics uh, economist uh, it is important for me to find the solution to the program instead of just uh, put the current picture. So for this reason, I said before, this study is very valuable because these studies put some uh, alternative system for the interest. 
So here is the, there is too many the graduate students, and I think these graduate students can study on this model, and uh, they can improve and they develop to this model. Unfortunately, like the, the the in the world, there is no Islamic economics right now, and we cannot apply or the I mean this is all difficult. Thanks. Sir. Okay, now, uh, if there is no question, we move to the second presenter, Professor Tosif Azid. Okay, uh, Professor Azid, the floor is yours. When uh, uh, Wright brothers, uh, they have their uh, new invention, they have the aeroplane, and uh, the people from the area, they invited uh, two of them, and they celebrated that. And they asked to the younger brother, come and uh, say something. And young, younger brother said, I'm not able to say anything because I'm not a good speaker. My brother will come and he will say. When they asked to the elder brother, he said, what I want to say, already my younger brother has, uh, uh, uh, has said that. The same is with me. What I want to say that brother, Mahabad Ali Jari, he said all the things. And when he was saying something, I'm building my uh, slides. So nothing is in my hands. So... <laughs> But uh, uh, I am a teacher, so always when teacher has a rostrum or the board, he has to say something. So uh, my topic is, uh, now I have changed that a bit, interest, market, philanthropy, and efficiency, and Islamic approach. And one of my student, uh, Dr. Azim Qureshi, is here. He's also my co-author. Uh, he's a associate professor in Oslo Business School, Norway. And one of other, Osama al Rashda is also my colleague in Kasim University, Saudi Arabia. So, uh, as I told you that, Brother Mahabad didn't left for me anything, but I have to say, uh, so I'm not uh, going uh, more of the technicalities, because he has explained those. So my, my, no, my more emphasis on the social uh, aspects of the interest. Okay, what is the impact on the market? Why philanthropy? And when we say the philanthropy and market, we are uh, based on that uh, verse of Quran. Quran says, Yahma Kurriba, Yurbis Sadakat. So this is a complementary set. On the one side, there is no interest. Other side, if there is no interest, then what is that? There is the philanthropy sadakat. <coughs> when interest is uh, closing all the uh, uh, activities, then sadakat is flourishing the activities, economic activities, and as well as social activities. <coughs> At the beginning, I am uh, just uh, taking an example instead of the mode of the technicalities, this is an example from the India. There was microfinance, and generally we know that microfinance is helping for the poor, is uh, uh, reducing the poverty, is elevating the poverty, is flourishing the uh, uh, economic conditions of the poor people. <coughs> but uh, uh, this is an example from the India that there is a uh, microfinance so if you will see this uh, slide, there are four uh, comments. Turn the working class into people who are permanently in debt, running to catch up with their lifestyles. The fun, uh, first point. Then microfinance companies in India are responsible for hundreds of suicides. And 20 people in Andhra, 200 people in Andhra Pradesh in 2010 alone committed suicide because of interest. A National Daily recently published suicide note by an 18-year-old girl who was forced to hand over her last rupees 150, her school fees to bullying employees of the microfinance company. And this is the result. So due to interest, you can see that. We, but we are saying in the microfinance companies, those are based on the rate, on, on interest, and not on uh, mudarbar, musharka, and joint ventures. And as I said in the beginning, your uh, if we are not following that uh, uh, part of the verse of Quran, if just interest and, and what interest does, you, you can see that it, it creating it creates the selfishness, brutalness, cruelty, and so on. And this is the result: work work hard and earn money. Do not take loans, because as Brother Mahabad Ali Jari said that in Islam there is a karde hasana. Benevolence. This is not uh, Cardon rate of interest. And when you are taking the rate of in, uh, Cardon loan on the rate of interest, 
and that is just money is creating the money. When money is creating the money, this is the result. Uh, the important of uh, role of uh, banks, you know that what they are doing, they are generating the economic activity. They are responsible for the payment system and they provide safe place for people to deposit their savings. This, up till this point, it is okay. When, when they are charging the rate of interest, then the consequences are there, then the bad consequences are there. But this is not the new story. Interest in the different religions, if we will starting from the uh, uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, and even the Greek uh, philosophy, philosophers, all are against the rate of interest. But they are saying interest is not good, unjust and unproductive. If you will see the Aristotle, his uh, book is Politics. A number of places he said that it is unproductive, it is unjust, and this is, this is just like a murder. So he is not appreciating, even he is not a, a religious scholar, but he is a philosopher and he is uh, uh, not appreciating the interest. So in spite of its uh, negative impact of the socioeconomic stu structure, it persists in the business and economic markets. So this is again... There is a dichotomy. There is a, uh, this, there is a, uh, uh, a, a, a, a what, what you can say, a, two, two, two sides of the story. On the one side, philosophers, religi religious scholars, and most of the uh, uh, reformers, they are against the rate of interest. They are against the interest. But on the other side, from the, when, whenever we will see in the history, whatever the records we have, interest is always there. However, after the financial crisis of 2008, it is realized that every sector of the life that interest and both are cause for the curse for the society and the economy. So now again, people are thinking about that. Why interest? Why, why not without interest? So this is some historical uh, uh, facts that according to Aristotle, interest is unnatural and unjust. He believed that money cannot create money because it is unproductive. That we are not saying. As nowadays, <clears throat> as a student of Islamic economics, we are saying that <clears throat> money, is, money is, uh, uh, does not create money and money is uh, unproductive and so on. This is not a new story. If you will see that, this is the uh, Greek philosopher Aristotle said, interest is unnatural and unjust, and money cannot create money because it is unproductive. Because of the role, role of Jews as money lenders, King Edward expelled them from England at the end of the 13th century. Again, if you will see that, generally, if historically, Jews are always involved in the business of money lending. And due to this money lending, there's a lot of, there was a lot of problems in 13th century, so King Edward expelled them from the because there's a lot of bad effects on the economic activities. So uh, that uh, that uh, were expelled were expelled from the England. During the 13th century, intellectuals and scholars were trying to find the ways of the permission of usury. Always, as I told you, always on the one side, people are against scholars, religious, especially religious scholars and philosophers. But on the other side, the traders, money lenders, always they are insisting, they are emphasizing that interest is compulsory for the economic activities. So intellectuals, scholars, on the other side, they are trying to prove it. Without it, it is not possible for the, for the, growing, for the growth of the economy. However, according to church, until the 16th century, usury is immoral and unproductive. Again, they have another uh, uh, uh, uh, issue. What is usury and what is, what is interest? Always there is a conflict among the different scholars. Interest is uh, uh, allowed, is a fair, where usury is not allowed. But they are saying interest is the value of money, interest is the time for that, and so on. A number of things which is uh, explained by Brother Mahabad Ali But in relation to modern financial transaction, it is well known that modern conventional banking is based on the ch charging of interest on capital, which is unanimously agreed by jurists as a form of riba. Riba from the respective of orient orientalist, uh, orientalists Riba is permissible as it is permitted on the potential economic benefits that can be generated from it, such as its opportunity cost. It is known as the price of renting out of money. So what they are saying, usually is okay, it is haram, 
it is not uh, allowed, but interest is allowed because this is the renting out of the money, so it is permissible. Without interest, it is not possible for us to grow our economy. It is not possible for us to involve in the trading and economic activities. So revise, uh, but on the other side, again, as I told you, always two schools of thoughts are there before Islam even. Uh, the religious scholars and the uh, moral philosophers, they are, they are against the uh, interest because they know what are the impact on the society as well as the, on the economy. And also on the equity and uh, income distribution. So revise is impermissible, impermissible as it violates the primary purpose, function of money as a medium of exchange. Islamic economists and uh, modernists, the alternative view which consider riba to be permissible is premised on the potential economic benefit that can be generated from it, such as the opportunity cost. So some of the Islamic economies, they are also in the favor of that, and they are saying, especially in, uh, in India and Pakistan, very popular, uh, famous scholar, uh, Sayyid Ahmed, he said that uh, usury is, is, is haram, but interest is not haram for the uh, economic uh, speed of the economic activities. Then we have a different categorization of riba. There's no, no need to say that the riba al-misal, riba al-fadl, and so on. So objection of, on riba by Sharia scholars among the main and the clearest objection to riba as explained by Sharia scholars is that riba is considered as unearned income as entails taking someone's property. If you will uh, emphasize on this point, it entails taking someone's property without any counter value. And then again, with... This is all I have done it. This is the Minsky. You know, uh, uh, uh, Minsky was a very prominent uh, scholar, and he was always against the riba interest, and as well as the uh, whatever the, uh, we have a, a huge amount of debt. But nobody was listening to him, and he was uh, crying always, what I am saying, it is correct, it is correct. And ultimately, now they realize that the Minsky moments are there. But when he was died, then they realized okay, he was right. As I told you that one side, riba and interest and its impact and it is monetary and fiscal uh, expansionary policy and so on has already discussed by Brother Mavid. So I will not discussing all these things. My, my point is, okay, why charity? Why sadhakat? When we are saying, yama ko riba wa yurubi sadhakat, so why, why sadhakat is there? And what is the conventional point of view about that. So what is the basis of Islamic system? The charity is the cause of growth, whereas interest has a negative impact on the economic activities. And Allah has permitted trade and has forbidden rate of interest. So the Islamic economic system is based on two injections, these two injections. The one is Trade is permitted and interest is uh, not uh, permitted, is not allowed, uh, whereas uh, uh, riba uh, is, uh, whenever there's a riba, that will reduce the economic activities, and whenever there is a sadhakat, those will increase the economic activities. So, in Islam, when we are saying philanthropy, what does it mean? Philanthropy means the art of giving back. It is not that always someone is taking the philanthropy sadkar. If you remember the very famous story of Prophet Sallallahu a person came to him that I am very poor, I haven't anything. Prophet asked him, what you have? He said, I have one blanket and one and just a bowl of uh, uh, which from where I am using to eating my food and so on. Then Prophet Sallallahu said, sell it and uh, take an axe and then go to the forest and cut the wood and bring that in the market and then sell it in the market, and then you can earn the money. And I don't want to see the sign of begging in the front of any Muslim. So philanthropy in Islam, it doesn't mean that just to have taking it. Actually, this, this is the training. When you haven't anything, and you are taking the sadaqat and the uh, uh, uh, this charity, then you, you will be able to give it back to the someone else. This is a continuous process. So when we are saying yama ko riba wa yurbi sadakat, so sadakat charity is the main cause for the growth of the economic activity.
So the main objective of the donations is to develop the social, human, psychological, and religious capital that will enhance, enhance the productivity and efficiency of the community. I will discuss later on that, how these uh, um, uh, moral actions, when we are creating the moral economy, not the conventional economy. And what is the moral economy where always everything is not based on the selfishness, not based on the greediness. That is based on the honesty, based on the brotherhood, and based on the love to each another. So philanthropy is a tool to mitigate the pitfalls of the market and helping hand to promote virtuous cycle of market mechanism. Generally, if you know that the most uh, uh, uh, promoter of the market is Haig, the Nobel Prize holder. And always he is saying, through the market, you can support the economy. Through the market, you can support the society. Through the market, you can promote the community. If there is no market, then if there is a philanthropy, then there is a problem. Because we are generally, according to his view, we are giving the philanthropy to known, not to unknown. And market is neutral. Market is not considering this is known or unknown. So it is better to serve thousands of unknown than to serve just the known and benefit should be beyond our knowledge. This is the Hague. Hague is not in the favor of philanthropy. He is in the favor of market mechanism. Demand and supply forces will work and ultimately people will get the benefit from the market activities. And according to him, this direct uh, uh, giving and, uh, uh, and the, uh, the altruistic actions are not able to cover the whole community, whereas earning a living in a well-functioning market provides a great benefit to the great society. So his, his emphasis on the great society, not to the unknown. So if you will see this uh, uh, diagram, it's very interesting. It will tell us, it will guide us how market works, how market is treating. For a fair selection, everybody has to take the same exam. Please climb that tree. There is an elephant, there is a dog, there is a fish, there is a monkey, there is a penguin. Number of things are there. So how it is possible, as Haig is saying, we are treating everyone in the market on the same scale. It is not possible. And Quran says, Yamako riba ve yurbi sadakat. So it means this interest is a market phenomenon. So market is not willing to help to the people. And market is not treating uh, uh, according to the efficiencies, according to the abilities, and according to the needs of the people. So what is the function of the private sector? Private sector just provides the jobs Again, not. Sadaqat is there, the charity. When we say the corporate shows social responsibility, so corporate shows social responsibility is not the new thing. All of the religions are in the favor of that, that the corporate sector and the business sector and the private sector, they, help, they have to help the people, just not to earn the interest from the others and not to pay the interest. So when we are saying corporate social responsibility is according to Islamic point of view, pay the zakat and avoid the interest. You can see that this is the one organization. There is a tap of water and water is running. So how much is the share everyone is taking? Owner is taking the income. Then there is a MD, then GM, then manager, and ultimately their employees, they have just some few drops of water. If there is a not, uh, if there is a selfishness, if there is a uh, not honesty, if there is a not brotherhood, then we are not able to uh, promote and develop the society and the community. So the way capitalists helping the others, you can see that what they are saying, attention, if you are the ship's captain, it's investors and manufacturers where we are here to rescue you. So when we are doing with the business, with the interest, the capitalists saying, we are here, we are providing you. If you need the loan, we are here. If, you, if your uh, business is sinking, don't, uh, uh, don't be afraid, don't, don't be desperate. 
I am, we are here, we, are, we, we can give you. But when they are giving, what is happening? People are sinking in the river. They are dying, as I given the example in the beginning. Then the microfinance people are coming to the poor people and they ask to them, we are here, what do you need? We are helping you. Ultimately, they are committing suicide. The same is here. So philanthropy is complementary as a Polanyi's double movement. On the one side, if capitalists and all those people, those are selfish, they are doing that, then, then according to Hague, market is working properly. So market is not working. So according to Polanyi's, then we have to help them. There's maybe through the government or through the private sector. So... So we have an uh, intangible capital through philanthropy, as this is a response from the Hague, uh, uh, a response of the Hague that why market is not good, because when we have the sadaqat, we have the charity, then we have a different types of capital, intangible capital, which are ultimately increasing the economic activities of the, because you know that when there is a capital, capital is increasing, uh, is, uh, is, is for the production of the goods. So we have a Time. Sorry, almost. Yes, time is up. Yeah, two minutes. Okay, two minutes. So we have a religious capital, psych psychological capital, social capital, and a human capital. So I'm not taking too much time for these. Uh, so just, these are the commercial banks, government, and rich segment of the society. The government lies, the bank steals, the rich laughs. This is the, this is the rate of interest, which we have. The government always, the conventional government, not the Islamic one, they are telling lie with the people. Okay, we are doing this, we are doing this, with, that they are not doing anything. And banks are stealing the money of the poor people. And then rich are laughing in the private uh, meetings, what we have been done. And it is happening in the capitalist world. These are banks and government. We are self bond to you so we can bail you out with loans. And this was happening in 2008 and 2009. So then we have to make a difference. We have to help the poor. Not emphasize on the interest, but we have to not become selfish. Just, uh, I, I, I'm speak, uh, skipping uh, that illustration which I have. Uh, if, if, if there's a question, then I will explain that. But uh, we are not uh, desperate. If you see this on the Wall Street, this woman is saying, let's bang the Muslim way. Even the non-Muslims, they are demanding for the Islamic uh, financing and uh, Islamic uh, uh, uh, whatever the product we have. Time is short. And I'm also, as, as I told you that, I am not uh, able to say anything. So, Jazakumullah Khair. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Razid. Um, uh, it was a really, uh, I mean, we, I, I think uh, we benefited from this presentation. Uh, I was going to uh, say, I mean, I still remember the uh, crowds. I mean, they were, uh, you know, protesting in the uh, Wall Street after the, 2008 crisis. Uh, I, I'm rem I remember the young uh, college student, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, protesting against, against this fractional reserve banking. But uh, this is the same, uh, I think, scene. Uh, I think this picture is taken in, in this uh, protest during this yeah, protest. I think. Yeah, I mean, uh, Professor Azit also, uh, you know. Uh, uh, make the point that, that we have an illusion, uh, you know, this microfinance, uh, it is attempt, an attempt to uh, serve the poor, uh, but it actually uh, there, the, it is an illusion uh, as long as the interest exists, even a very low uh, level, it, is, uh, it becomes a really dangerous uh, tool, uh, even to kill people. Okay, uh, now uh, the paper will be discussed by uh, Taha Iri, and uh, I leave the floor to him. Thank you. I would like to continue to speak in Turkish. Today, first of all, I would like to say that 
tartışmadan tabii son oturumun son tartışması. Profesör Azit e, gayet detaylı bir sunumla kendi e, paper'ını özetlemiş oldu. Birkaç ek e, paper'da olmayan açıkçası tanımları da yer aldığını gördüm sunumda. Gel, e, metnin dışında bazı eklemeler de burada var. Şimdi açıkçası metinle belki ileride kendisinin ekleme yapması için son modüle de geleceğim. Metindeki e, faiz meselesinin tüm dinlerden yola çıkarak faizin yasaklığına değiniyor ve faizin yasaklığının yerine özellikle İslam'da önerilen e, katılım ortaklık yapısının aslında bunun model olarak e, iyi bir model olduğunu belirtiyor Azit. E, şu anki yapılan zaten bizim e, İslami finans kurumlarının bir çoğunda baktığımızda bu gelişmesi hızlı bir şekilde gelişmesi özellikle İslam dünyasındaki sermaye birikili de bu katılım ortaklık yapısının da ihtiyaçla bir ortaya çıkışını gösteriyor ama e, hala tam manasıyla hak ettiği yeri bulduğunu söylemekte zor. Belki bunun işte piyasa içerisindeki verimliliği veya sermaye birikimindeki eksiklikten bir kaynaklandığını tam olarak bilmemekle beraber bu ortaklık yapısı henüz tam olarak faiz alternatif bir şekilde piyasanın tamamına erişebilmiş değil. Bununla ilgili biraz daha belki tartışmak gerekiyor. E, metinde kendisinin belirtmediği ama metinde yer alan bir eleştiri belki burada belirtmek lazım. Özellikle İslami finans kurumlarının şeriat temelli ürünler olarak geliştirdiği bu finansal araçların karşısına yer alan klasik araçların birebiri olarak, birebir benzeri olarak hayata geçirilmesinin ve bunun da e, işte sistemin bir anda bir, yani bir anda değiştirilmesi yerine bu ref, gradually değişmesi e, eleştirisini getiriyor aslında metinde. Belki kendisinin bu bunu aşması da iyi olacak gibi duruyor. Yani İslami finans kurumlarına getirmiş olduğu eleştiriden dolayı. Şimdi e, genel metnin temel e, vurgu noktasına gelecek olursak bu bağış filantrofi e, hususunda kendisinin e, merkeze aldığı finansal sistem yerine oluşturmuş olduğu bu filan trafiğinin ben açıkçası tam olarak metinde tam manasıyla nasıl bir model oturtması gerektiğini göremedim. Yani e, filan trafiği sosyal politika aracı olarak toplumda belli yoksulluk, yoksulluğun giderilmesi veya gelir eşitsizliğinin e, adaletsizliğinin düzeltilmesi açısından belirli bir araca dönüştürülebilir ama özellikle üretim yapısı ve e, piyasa yapısı içerisinde üretim ilişkilerinin düzenlenmesinde modern sistemde faizin yerine filan trafiğinin nasıl konabileceği hususu açıkçası model olarak biraz paper'da eksik gibi geldi bana. Özellikle e, filan trafiği meselesinin direkt olarak faizin alternatifi olarak değil de doğru dolaylı olarak işte human capital onun altında da religious capital e, psychological capital olarak belirttiği Suslarda filantrofinin bu insani gelişimi sağlaması, insani gelişimlerle birlikte bu e, insani gelişimin daha mutlu ve e, verimli insanın piyasadaki üretime katkısının artacağından dolayı büyümeye katkı sağlayacağını iddia ediyor Metin. Bu hususta e, sonu, sanırım şu an için baktığımızda modern e, işletme teorisi içerisinde de özellikle insan kaynaklarının geliştirilmesi açısından belirli çalışmalar yapıldığı görülüyor. Yani iş yeri ortamının düzenlenmesi, onların verimliliğinin yapılması hususunda. Bunun farklılıkları, benzerlikleri hususunda da belki biraz daha atıf olsa e, iyi olacağını kanaatindeyim. Özellikle e, filantrofi meselesi finansal piyasaların düzenlenmesi açısından risk taşıyan bir husus. Daha önceki sunumlarda dinlediğim sunumlardan bir tanesi özellikle Türkiye'deki katılım bankalarının e, kar zarar ortaklığı hususunda şirketlerin yanlış beyanları veya iflasları sonucunda yönetemez hale geldikten sonra kar zarar ortaklığı yerine leasing hususu yani daha e, sermaye ortaklığı yerine borç vermeye dayalı bir geçiş aslında sistemin risklerinin de giderek artmasına yol açıyor. Yani siz baktığınızda bugün faizi kaldırıp kendilerine ortaklığını getirseniz de finansal İslami finans kurumlarının ne kadar risk alabileceklerini veya bu risklere karşı ne tür önlemler geliştirebileceğini dair henüz önümüzde net model öğrenileri yok. Yani Minsky Moment meselesinde baktığımızda ben açıkçası tam olarak tüm literatürünü okuyan yani Minsky'yi okumadığım için şey bir 
e, iddialı bir eleştiri yapmış olmak isteyeyim ama, ama sanki onun belirtmiş olduğu şey borcun büyümesi ve borca dayalı sistemin giderek şişmesi ekonomik krizin doğmasına sebep oluyor. Faizi tamamen ortadan kaldırmanın e, bir alternatif olduğunu söylüyor mu yoksa borcu kontrol etmenin yani o kontrolsüz e, Amerikan finansal sisteminin kontrolsüz borcu borç verişini herkese borca e, boğmasını mı kontrol etmesi gerektiğini e, çünkü bu şunu getiriyor yani biz şu an küçük kar payları da olsa tüm Müslümanları İslami şeri, yani şeriata uygun finansal araçlarla borca boğduğumuz zaman sizin de Hindistan önlerinde verdiğiniz gibi e, bu aynı şekilde tüm Müslümanları da aynı risk içerisinde almaz mı? Borç büyüyerek bütün Müslümanlar da sistem içine dahil ederek bu riski artırmaz mı? Çünkü e, diğer taraftan baktığımızda yani finansal sistemde bankalar battığında onları kurtaran bir hükümet sisteminden bahsediyoruz ama İslami finans sektörünün bu şekilde önlemsiz olarak büyümesi veya diyelim e, büyümesi sonucunda herhangi bir e, reel sektör krizinin küçük orta ve yani kobilerin batmasıyla birlikte bunun finansal sektöre geçişi ve toplumda daha yaygın bir hale gelmesi riski de biraz bu noktada söz konusu. Son olarak e, yani İslami finans kurumları batarsa biz ne yapacağız gibi bir soru belki burada e, ortaya çıkıyor. E, son olarak bir de e, filantrofi meselesinde sürdürülebilirlik konusu benim aklıma takılan bir husus. Yani zekat e, belirli bir miktar karşılıyor. Eğer sermaye zaten işleyen sermayenin dışındaki kalan miktara zekat düştüğünü düşünürsek ve siz eğer o sermaye büyümediği takdirde zekat oranları da yıldan yıla düşeceğinden dolayı e, fakirlere yoksullara yapacak bu filantrofinin sürdürülebilirliğinin nasıl sağlanması gerekiyor hususunda sorup e, tamamlamış olayım. E, ben kendisine sunumu için teşekkür ediyorum. Kendisinin anlatmasının ötesinde benim anlayış kabiliyetimle sınırlı olduğunu da bu hususta belirtmem lazım. Eğer herhangi bir sürçü lisan ettiysem affola. Teşekkür ederiz Tağ Bey. Okay, if you have a comment on this discuss. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you brother. Uh, the one thing is <coughs> which I want to explain that is uh, Islamic financial banks and uh, uh, the philanthropy. Uh, there was a one paper which me and uh, again Azim Qureshi we presented in the Mecca conference. And what was that? Uh, that is the solution is venture philanthropy. That uh, our uh, banks, the people will deposit the philanthropy in the banks and then banks will use those philanthropy for the madar bar, mushar, and that. And uh, also Uh, uh, providing the training programs for the poor people, for their increasing their skill and their technical expertise. So this is the not uh, these banks are just not for the earning the money. These Islamic financial banks, because maksad the Sharia is different. The maksad the Sharia is to help the society to increase the social welfare. So these Islamic banks uh, they can do it when when we are de uh, depositing our. Uh, Uh, uh, philanthropy, zakat, and uh, charities into the bank, and then bank will provide uh, uh, training, uh, provide the uh, uh, help, and they, have, they will use, they, uh, they will establish some some institutions, uh, uh, manufacturing institution, which will uh, hire these people, and then they can uh, give the uh, uh, employment and so on. Due to that reason, when, when we have this model, when whenever there is a philanthropy. First of all, it is creating the religious and moral capital. This religious and moral capital automatically increase because when someone is taking and someone is giving, this philanthropy automatically, their their generosity is uh, increasing. Brotherhood is increasing, friendship and the relationship in between the society, the members of the society and the community community will increase. And later on, when when we have this uh, uh, philanthropy and the people, as I gave the example of one of the Sahabi. He came to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he, he told his story and the Prophet asked him to sell the jar, whatever you have and go to the jung, uh, forest and then cut the woods and then sell in the market. So it means when we have uh, this type of things uh, and uh, when, when the society is going on that way, then human capital as well as social capital is increasing. When all these capital are increasing, then on the one side we have a tangible capital, that the traditional capital, on the other side we have intangible and intangible in terms of moral capital, in terms of 
social and human capital, then automatically the productivity, the level of productivity increase in the economy. And the role of uh, financial banks is, as, as I told you, the venture philanthropy. And uh, whereas uh, I have given this uh, model, if you will see that, where is that? So there is a, a one model uh, which is uh, I have taken from my own thesis that is the input output analysis. And there, what is the difference? We have on one side we have the price of the output, and other side we have the average variable cost per unit. When we have the cost uh, variable cost per unit, and if this interest is not there, this part, uh, this is not there because we are paying the interest. Then only two things are there: wages and as well as the price of the products or inputs which we are using. Then you can see the cost will reduce, and when the cost will reduce, then there are least chances for the different existing technology to live in the market. They are not becoming obsolete, and then there is not wastage of too much resources as we have nowadays in the capital economies. Whenever then any economy is becoming becoming obsolete, all the material which they have, they are going to be obsolete, they are obsolete and they are, people are not just they will fetch their scrap value. So when there is no interest, you can see in this model. Just we have a pay to wages to the labors and the price of the inputs which we are using, and then it, if it is based on the partnership, still we are saying that the partnership is not very much popular in the Islamic financial system. Even then, in the industrial sector, if this is basically the example of the manufactured sector, so if we have a, a partnership, in, in the partnership you can see that with the madar bar masharika, then if there is a loss, they will not get anything and they will lose their capital. If there is a profit, they will be sharing, they will have the share in the capital. But in the cost of interest is not there. In that way, the variable cost will decrease. When the variable cost will decrease, then there is at least chances for the existing technology to become obsolete. So, Jazakumullah khair. I don't know. It is okay or not? <laughs> okay, uh, well, uh it seems that we have to um, actually problem here. We have to create a new uh, uh, human being as a, uh, we have to uh, construct a new economy, uh, human being as an eco economic agent. Uh, but this is a long term uh, plan. But in the short term, we need uh, we we need to redesign the uh, system in the institutional level. So the burden is on the regulators here. And uh, I'm happy to hear that uh, yesterday uh, the president of the BD, uh, uh, banking regulating agency uh, thought that we are working on the new uh, bank banking models. Inshallah, I mean, uh, we will be uh, ha having uh, you know more just uh, or, or you know, compatible, more, more new institu banking institutions which are more compatible with this Makassar Sharia. Okay, now uh, I open the uh, floor to questions and answers and comments. If you have any questions or comments to Professor, yes. If there is any technical, then ask to Brother Mabid. Assalamu <laughs> uh, uh, First, I want to thank for both the uh, uh, discussant and uh, Mr. Tosi Fazil. But I just want to ask an uh, important question. I, if I don't uh, understand wrongly, uh, you built the growth, economic growth, on the philanthropic activities rather than interest. But uh, I just wonder that to what extent to build the growth on the philanthropic activities uh, are robust and healthy uh, in economic sense. Because uh, you cannot force the people to make philanthropic activities and uh, you will you will be responsible for the state and administration and uh, in terms of policy making so uh, I just uh, thought that uh, did we understand the ayat uh, you mentioned the uh, just a second please huh. Which means Allah destroys interest and gives increase for charities. Uh, so I thought that uh, did we understand or did we uh, strive to understand this holy verse in a wrong sense and uh, fictionalize this in economy uh, in an uh, unhealthy uh, sense or uh, should it be uh, in the sense that you mentioned. Yes. Actually, uh, again, uh, what I'm saying, uh, take do these two points together. These are 
complementary to each other. It's a complete set. Don't take the one part. On the one side, as Hayek he said that said that there is a market and market is working. So interest rate is a is a market phenomenon. So we are we are not working with the market. In in that sense, because when there is a no interest, then there is a uh, joint venture, madarba, musharka, these type of things. So there is a partnership among the different economic agents of the society and the community. Then this is the first step. And whatever the uh, uh, ranking of that, what is the, the, the pri- according to priority, the first priority is no interest. Jamhakur uh, riba. And then later on, this is the second step. In, from the priority point of view, this Yurubi Sadakas is on the, on the second step. If even then there is a, no interest, there is a partnership, there is economic activities, but still there are some people are there. So this is the, this is the responsibility of the society to help them. And when society is helping, again, as I, as I mentioned in the beginning, philanthropy means art of giving. It's not the art of taking. This is just for a, for a small uh, period of time. You, you help the people, and then people are using those funds, and they are starting their business, and then they are again able to give the uh, uh, uh, charity. So this is a part of economic activity. But according to priority-wise, the first is there is no interest. There is a uh, uh, joint ventures, and people are, are, are uh, sharing with each other the sharing economy, and then they are economic. They are participating in the economic activities. But if some people, due to certain reasons, always there are some people are the small segments or the big segment is there. They are not able to participate in the economic activities due to their natural uh, uh, problems and the natural issues. Then this is the responsibility of the society to help them. When society is helping them, then they are becoming the again active member of the society and so the cycle is going on. Şimdi e, ekrandaki resmi de e, dikkate alarak şey yapmak istiyorum. Bir noktayı tespit etmek isterim. Doğrusu bu ekrandaki resim mikrofinans kullanıcısı olan birisinin borcunu ödeyemediği için muhatap olduğu sonuç olarak ifade edildi. Yani e, mikrofinans uygulamasının e, geniş bir literatürü var. E, yani şeye bakıldığında yoksullar birçok şeyden dışlanmışlardır. Yoksulların en çok dışlanmış olduğu şey finans sektöründe bulunma imkanı. Yani bir teminat gösterme olanağında mahrum olmaları nedeniyle en çok dışlandıkları şey finans sektörüdür. Mikrofinans uygulaması da bir ölçüde yoksulların finans sektörüne ulaşmaları için oluşturulmuş bir kurumsal yapıdır. Dünyada geniş yoksullukla mücadelede kullanılan bir kurumsal kapasiteye ulaşmıştır. Yani şu an 3000 üzerinde kurumsal güce ulaşmış bir yapıdır. Evet yani faizin halen uygulanan bir mekanizma olarak mikrofinanste bir araç olarak kullanılıyor olması bir sorundur. Ama yani bunun alternatifi İslami mikrofinans uygulamalarına ilişkin bir uygulama alanı ve literatürde bir şey geliştiğini de ifade etmek lazım. Yani burada faizin kötü örneğini mikrofinans üzerinde gösterilmiş olması bir parça e, bence hani e, biraz haksızlık olmuyor mu e, şeyini dillendirmek istedim, ifade etmek isterim bu anlamda. Mikrofinans'ın oluşturmuş olduğu yoksullukla mücadeledeki rolünü hatırladığımızda yani literatür üzerindeki e, konumunu ifade etmek üzere. E, bir diğer husus e, yani bir parça e, biraz evvel arkadaşımız da ifade etti ama Piyasanın önemini sanki göz ardı ediyoruz. Yani piyasayı Bunu ben de e, doğrusu e, yani şöyle bir şey ifade etmek lazım. Yani bugün uluslararasındaki zenginliğin en önemli farkının kaynağını açıklayan birçok geniş bir literatür vardır. E, bu literatürün içerisinde e, önemli bir kısmının piyasa ekonomisinin zen, uluslararası zenginlik farkının önemli bir unsuru olduğunu, önemli bir faktörü olduğunu ve yani biz Müslümanların 
e, faiz eşittir veya faizin piyasayla olan ilişkisini e, bunu çok bir, birinin vazgeçilmez unsuruymuş gibi ifade edip piyasayı da burada mahkum etmemeye dönük bir duyarlılık içerisinde e, bir yaklaşım farklılığı ortaya koymamızın önemli olduğunu ifade etmek isterim. Dolayısıyla evet faiz konusunda e, bütün dünyanın çok ciddi bir sorunu var. Bütün e, e, insanın en eski, en eski tarihlerinden bugüne ciddi bir şey var ve bugün de halen faiz konusunda ortaya konmuş e, olumsuz sonuçlar var. E, ama burada faize ilişkin olumsuz sonuçları piyasaya dönük olan cephesini iyi ayırt etmek lazım geldiğini düşünüyorum. E, esas itibariyle de İlem'in yapmış olduğu e, diğer bir çalıştayı da ortaya konduğu üzere yani Müslümanların e, piyasayla bir sorunu yok. Yani bunu da e, yani İslam'ın da Müslümanların da piyasayla bir sorunu yok. Belki bu anlamda devlet eksenli bir ekonomik yapıdan daha ziyade piyasa eksenli bir ekonomik yapının e, İslam'ın daha çok önceleyeceği bir e, şey oluşturduğunu, bir ekonomik sistem oluşturduğunu ifade etmek isterim. Teşekkür ederim. Thank you. What we are saying that market, not we are against the market. What we, are, what we are saying, when market is becoming neutral, when market is dealing each and every person in the same way, when Haig and his followers, they are saying that there is no need for the intervention from the government, whatever is happening in the, in the, in the business world or in the market. So, so what we were not saying the market is bad, as Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he was also in the favor of market and said the prices are determined by the demand and supply. But whenever there is exploitation, but according to the supporters of the uh, market, uh, market supporters, they are not in the favor of any intervention from the government or intervention from the society. Even they are not in favor of philanthropy. As Haig said, there is a no social justice. But what you are saying about the social justice, social justice is not available anywhere. This is the market, and you have to allow the market to deal each and everything. It is not possible for the market to deal each and everything. Nowadays, you can see that everywhere, even in the Western world, they are saying to the different uh, uh, organization, institution, for the corporate social responsibility. So what, is, what does it mean? It means this is not a market. For corporate social responsibility, that is not the part of the market. So 100% market is not uh, on the right way or is not correct or not, not uh, doing the uh, right things. So when we are saying the market, market means there are some other things are there. There is an intervention from the government as well as uh, the role of the society. Because he, he is not in the favor of the role of the society, in the role of the community and so on. Peki, e, normal şartlarda bu e, oturuma ayrılan sürenin de sonuna geldik. E, hepinize ilginizden, katkılarınızdan dolayı teşekkür ediyoruz. I thank you all for your contribution.